Good morning, my creative friends. So excited to be back with you on a cool and rainy Monday morning. And as I was sitting around this morning thinking about where do I want to go next and what feels inspiring and creative, I decided it was time to make a new journal. I've been working in the same journal for quite a while. And I was thinking about what's my own personal practice and routine that nourishes and supports me the most. And, and one of the things that occurred to me was the use of I am statements or affirmations to keep me in a positive frame of mind. And I find that affirmations, good morning, often serve as powerful journaling prompts more than anything else, right? Like that there are definitely times when <clears throat> we just need a way to think about things differently. And I have been having fun since I started this YouTube live channel, working in a different journal almost every month. And I realized I was looking back over the last couple of months I did a lot of work in this journal and I love how full it is but I'm like okay I need a different journey for where I want to go next and where I want to go next is to look about art and creative process good morning Julie um, art and creative process really as helping us stay on a path of personal growth and self-discovery there are lots of times in our life where nothing is wrong, nothing is broken, but maybe also nothing feels quite right. Maybe you feel a little disconnected, lost from your purpose. And a lot of times affirmations are a powerful tool to just help remind us and nudge us back on the path. So what I'm going to do over the next couple of days is create a new art journal and it's going to become an affirmations journal. So throughout the rest of May, I'm going to be working on creating affirmations so that I have a journal full of these positive and inspiring words so that when I need it, I have them there to lift me up. You could do this on tags. You could do this in an art journal that you're already working in. You could do it on old playing cards and create a deck but I decided I wanted to create a journal. These are the two canvases I started last week. I didn't love them, so I painted over them. And part of our own journey of personal growth is always about letting go, right? It's always about letting go of what's no longer serving us, letting go of what we no longer need, letting go of habits that don't support and enrich and nourish us. And I'm also thinking about all of this because my in-person retreat starts on Thursday of this week. So I will only be here again Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday this week. But in the theme of this one is connecting to your inner wisdom keeper. So I'm also thinking about it through that lens. You know, everything influences my art. And I think it's important to think about that. So I'm just going to start painting as I go. Actually, I think I want to come in with some collage. It felt important to have this music paper here on the page because this is all about the song of my life right and I'm looking for my matte medium all about the song of my life but I find that everything influences me right everything influences me okay do I want like all the music on there I kind of do all right so let's just trace this up here and we had a lovely Mother's Day. I hope those of you that are mothers and daughters had an okay day yesterday. I know Mother's Day can sometimes be a little uh, challenging for some people, but we had a beautiful day. We went up to my mom's house, and it was so lovely. My mom celebrated me yesterday, and it was just really lovely. You know, my kids are... Um, awesome. I had lovely chats with both of my kids as well. And it was great to go and get to be with my own mom. And um, she made, she and my stepdad made a beautiful meal. And then we came back and we went to my favorite art store to grab some 
art supplies for an in-person class that I'm teaching tomorrow over in Parker, Colorado, which is a couple hours south of here, trying to get that open. Um, and then, you know, Brad's like, you, you don't want to go by Barnes and Noble, do you? And uh, of course I want to go by Barnes and Noble because bookstores are my favorite. So long-winded way to say we went to Barnes and Noble. And one of the books that popped out at the off the shelf at him that I'm also excited about is a mindful self-compassion book. And I think self-compassion is the most important work that we can do on our journey of personal growth, self-development, healing. All right, I'm going to have to trim that up a little bit. I may find an exacto knife later because I don't think I have one over here. We'll get it started here. And I find painting brings all of our self-doubts, inner critic, inner mean girl, like so much of our painting practice brings all those thoughts to the foreground. We can go into comparison or just judgment. It doesn't look good enough. It doesn't look like it's supposed to. Blah, blah, blah. We're really good at finding all the things that are wrong. And we forget to focus on, like, what's actually right? What's actually right? Even when things are good, spending some time in gratitude. Like this morning I was doing some journaling and just reconnecting to my core values. And that's such a powerful part of our practice. I also woke up with a lot of gratitude for you, Julie, this morning. So our conversation on Friday was just what I needed to get me inspired and going on that new project that I'm working on. So thank you for that. I got most of the sales page written Saturday morning. Super excited. All right. I love music paper, and I'm almost wondering if I want the inside be covered with music paper as well so that when I'm opening the insides of the journal there's some music there but I will decide that a little bit later. Okay those hanging over ends are gonna be I love making handmade books out of canvas board. So I am working on five by seven canvas boards. I'll show you, here's what one looks like new in the package. So I love these, they're super inexpensive at Michael's. You can buy, you know, a big old stack of them when they're on sale. They make great journal covers. They're very sturdy, you can beat them up a lot. I'll make a nice bound journal to go on the, the inside of these. So I love them for journal covers. All right, I want some matte medium down on the top of these two covers as well. And then we're gonna go in with some paint and collage. So I'm building up these layers. Don't ask me why I wanted that music paper on there, but I think there's always something for me. I love music paper in my collages, but there's something about just being reminded to listen to the song of our lives. It feels always super important. And if you love art journaling and personal growth and self-discovery, you're in the right place. If you're new and just watching me for the first time, I want to invite you to hit that subscribe button on the bottom right of the video and subscribe to my channel so you get notified anytime I have new content created or when I do go live. And I'm missing some paper towels on the side of the studio. And also click that like button if you're liking what I am doing so that we can get more people watching along. It would be super appreciative. So now I'm going to come in, I think, with some stenciling over the top of this. And I just grabbed this stencil because I've been a little obsessed with it lately. I tend to usually have one or two. And then I also grabbed 
this letter, random letter stencil that I made out of some die cut letters that also felt fun to put on here. And I'm thinking I'm going to come back in with some more gesso over the top of this and start to push that music paper back. Makeup sponge. And I was also writing this morning about, you know, how it is that like my steps to my art journaling always end up being very similar, even though the results always end up being very different. The results end up being very different. My process is the same. I always start with a question. Morning, Kay. I always start with a question that might be as simple as, how am I feeling today? Today I'm feeling pretty excited and positive. Things are coming along in preparation for the retreat this week. Still lots to do, but I have lots of time to do it in. For once, I did a great job of not overfilling my calendar on a week when I have a live event, so that feels really good. All right. I don't know what it is about this particular flower stencil, maybe because it's a little mandala-like. I really, really love. So if you're just joining me, I am working on 5x7 canvas board, and I'm going to create an affirmations journal that I will be working in over time. All right. I am looking for a piece of paper. So I want to get some of the paint off here. So this is interesting. So this one tends to get a lot of paint on both sides, and I'm trying to create, clean some of that paint off, but look at the texture that it creates. I think because it's a metal stencil instead of the mylar, I get a lot of beautiful texture from that. So this is going to become a really interesting collage page for something later on. Now I've pulled a little bit of the paint off of there as well. I'm going to get this nice and dry, and then I am going to figure out where I want to go next. I think it's time to bring some color in. And I'm thinking maybe I'm just going to continue with this same stencil with a few layers of color here. So this beautiful quinacridone magenta from Nova Color was on my table right here. So I think I'm going to use that. And I'm going to stick with the same stencil. This is all going to get covered up later. later. I'm just building in some layers. But so I was thinking about creating art journal pages that for me always feel meaningful and useful, meaning they teach me something, they help me connect to my emotions. Like my art journaling tends to have a purpose and an intention, and I go about it pretty much the same way. If you've been following me for a while, you've seen that a lot, but I start always with a question, a prompt, a poem, even just a curious thought, a book I'm reading, and I do some journaling. Sometimes that journaling goes right onto the art journal page and gets painted over. Sometimes that goes in my morning pages journal, and then I bring it, the color and imagery, to the artwork. But I always start with writing. My friend Andrea usually goes the other way around. She starts with art and then writes. 
but we both over the last couple of years of doing our creative stretch work together have really sort of anchored in our daily creative morning practice and talk a lot about how to use that to manage our emotions in our art journals and we have a oops that was matte medium when what I wanted was gesso so matte medium is just acrylic paint without any pigment so it often works great as a glaze so fine to have that mixed in there just wanted to get a lighter pink going I'm feeling very pinky this morning apparently not white enough, which is a super bright, happy color for me, and I, I can't stop seeing pink, I think, because all of the trees everywhere are blooming. It's just beautiful here, right? Now. Even if it has been quite rainy and stormy, I'm definitely ready for some sunshine. Grateful for the rain as well. So I start with a prompt with some writing, with some words, just sort of how am I feeling today? What's on my heart today? What do I need more of today? Ooh, I'm loving this layered flowered look, super fun. And I'm thinking I want this to get dry and maybe I'm gonna come in with one more color. And I'm thinking maybe it's gonna be some bright yellow. So I need this to be super dry or I'm gonna create brown. And after the writing, I will often gesso over the writing. You saw me do that already. I added a layer of collage. And then so much of our emotional journey is about being stuck in the messy middle. And our art journal pages and our canvases mirror the messy middle, right? They mirror the messy middle. So every page canvas project that we create has a messy middle. And that to me is the fun part is being in the mix being with the emotions being with the colors being in the what the heck am i doing on this page so let me get this nice and dry And once I get past the messy middle, I usually have an idea of what the focal image is going to be. And I add that focal image. And then I finish it off with maybe some words or maybe some additional marks. Great, it's pretty dry. I'm also going to do this on my little stencil here. I don't tend to clean my stencils off, but because I want to get some nice bright yellow on the page, I'm going to get as much of that pink off of this as I can. And it tends to really stick to this metal stencil a lot. And when your stencils get too gunked up and you need to clean them, quick stencil cleaning tip. So one of the best things you can do is to just get like a cookie sheet and some soapy water or some kind of big pan and just some dish soap and water and just let them soak for a few hours or even a day and you will get them nice and clean and get all that gunk off of them because if they get too gunked up like where this is starting to get too gunked up I'll lose the shape of the stencil so I don't do that very often like maybe once a year but I don't use the same stencils over and over again I don't always even use stencils, but I do love using them on occasion. Okay, back to where we're going. Good morning, Yvonne. So I am working on creating two journal covers for an affirmations journal. That's what I'm going to be working on this month. The rest of this month, holy moly, we're in mid-May already. And I'm thinking this yellow isn't going to show as much as I want to, and I'm going to need to go back and put down some white first or maybe even just maybe I'll just mix a little bit of gesso with that white 
and get a little bit brighter yellow there and also create a little more opacity in that yellow as well. Stenciling is one of those things that's good for working out emotions and feelings. You can really pounce right through that stencil, move some of that energy. It's why I believe painting and art journaling are very somatic and they help us heal a lot of the energy and emotions in our body when we get them stuck inside. The only way through is to get them out, right? We can't numb them, stuff them, or avoid them forever. And so we can use our creative practice as a way to often move stuck energy, bring a little physicality to the process, or a little softness and gentleness to the process, thinking about, you know, what is it that you need more of right now? It's one of the questions I love to ask in my art journal pages and my writing journal as well as just, what do I need more of right now? Do I need to move? Okay, this is really pretty, liking where this is going. Maybe just one little ye a yellow here. All right, feeling happy and springy, and for an affirmations journal, that's how I want it to feel, is happy and springy. And I'm thinking I'm not going to want these letters on there, so that's going to make it too busy. I am going to go ahead and just clean this stencil off, noticing this one's getting a little gunked up. Plus it's creating a just again really cool texture on a page. This can all become collage fodder or it might even become pages in the journal. These are leftover handouts from a class I was teaching. And then as I was thinking this morning before I started about, you know, where I wanted to go with this and what I wanted to be on the cover, I am working on the demo for my retreat this weekend, which is all about connecting to our inner wisdom keeper. And I had this idea of the queen on a playing card, and I found this graphic image um, on Shutterstock. And so I'm using this as my inspiration. I'm not using this image, but I'm just using it as in inspiration. And I really loved her and this little bird. But I also found this cute little flower frame, right? So I have all these different ideas for things that I want to create could almost be a self-portrait in here as well. And I need to decide which of these do I want to paint over, because one of them is going to be the, the back cover. I'll start to move them around a little bit. And which one am I okay completely covering up? You notice I painted it anyway, knowing I was going to completely cover it up, because this is about creating those rich, depths of layer and meaning, moving through that messy middle, the emotions, everything that's sort of swirling around. Like I said, I'm pretty, pretty excited and upbeat this morning. Hmm, this is tricky. So they're both kind of pretty. So one's going to get just be the back cover as it is without a lot more added to it, and one's going to be the cover. All right. That one's going to be the back cover. Such decisions. And this one I'm going to figure out where I'm going next with this image and what can I do with her. I really liked what I was looking for in this particular was really the, the profile. And so I kind of like the, the profile here of her. I'm just going to cut this out and use it as maybe even a mask. I'm curious what would happen if I used her as a mask. 
I guess we're going to find out. I was thinking I was going to paint her out, but not how I'm feeling right now. And maybe this is going to help me keep some of those flowers on the front page. And I love this little birdie. I'm going to keep him too. All right, so not all of this is going to fit on the page. So even though that birdie is here, what I really need is just the figure. And it's going to have this frame over the top. I put her over there, I can get a little bit of that rose in there. So I'm just in that sort of curious inquiry. And I'm thinking I want just her. I don't need any of the rest of that. So again, everything, so much of what we do is just trial and error, right? Try it on for size. Do you like it? Is it the right size? Is it the right configuration? Do I, at first I was really drawn to this frame, but what I'm thinking is that this frame is going to go on the inside. And because this is an affirmations journal, there needs to be a self-portrait in here. So somewhere inside, I'm going to use this frame and a picture of myself which opens up lots more opportunities for what I want to perhaps add on the cover. And I could even come back in with some of these other pieces as well. She definitely takes up most of the cover. I love that she's holding a rose. So for one of my own personal growth and programs that I'm in is Philosopher's Camp with my dear friend Christine Powers. And uh, one of the members came up with this book, and we've all decided to read the book. Or she discovered a book called Way of the Rose. And it's all about discovering the divine feminine through the rosary. And as someone who was raised Catholic but didn't stay in the Catholic Church for a variety of reasons, I'm super curious about the book and what I might discover. And so that's what I got at Barnes & Noble yesterday with a really interesting book about doing the inner work of aging, which I'm super curious to explore also. Okay, so what I'm thinking is this is going to be like a redactive painting, so I'm going to want maybe more color on the background. Or do I want to just paint her? Hmm. Feeling very indecisive this morning, and so I just notice how that indecisiveness is a reflection of where else am I feeling indecisive right now? Where else am I feeling indecisive right now? I don't need to know the answer. But what I was journaling about as I was thinking about this morning and where I'm going and doing a brain dump of all the things that still need to get done in preparation for Thursday, right? Just like writing that all out, I could feel a little bit of that scattered energy. When there's too many decisions to be made, we go into that indecisiveness, and it's not my normal to be in a space of indecisiveness. So it's never a very comfortable emotion for me. I'm used to being very decisive, making decisions, moving on. All right. I'm going to go ahead and paint her white leave the flowers in the background, and just see where I get to on the page. So again, this is one of those 
mornings where I'm feeling attached to the pretty flowers, knowing I want this figure on the cover, how to find the balance of all of those, and being a little bit definitely in the messy middle of a piece. <clears throat> um, let's see, I don't want gesso. So gesso is much more opaque, pr provides, you know, just great coverage on the page. But when I want less opacity, I will come in with a, a fluid white so that I can still see some of the colors. I don't know if there's any left in this one. So I can still see some of the colors underneath. I want a little more transparency, less opacity. But I want to get here on the page and just see what happens. I definitely have a fondness for silhouettes and graphic illustrations. Noticing I also have a bump in my page there, so that'll be some interesting texture on my cover where I didn't get that page down smoothly. And I can always bring the flowers back if I need them, right? And maybe I'm going to leave them down here on her dress. So just being curious with how can that maybe all kind of blend in there together. in there. Definitely going to need some more definition so we understand what this little blobby bit is. But not a lot. I think the, the simplicity here, right, because this is a book of affirmations for personal growth and self-discovery. I'm really feeling like it needs some of my favorite teal blue on here, so I think I'm, that background is going to get painted up a bit, but I like where it started. All right, it's cleaned off. So I'm just feeling thoughtful in the process, and this for me is that mindful part <clears throat> of my own creative practice, right, is really allowing myself to be in the discovery and the thoughtfulness. I have these little inklings of ideas and no idea where they're taking me. They're just ideas, which is usually the nature of an idea. We don't have a fully fleshed idea. We have a spark of insight. And it, you know, it's like a seed that gets planted and it takes time for that seed to take root and a lot happens underground before we ever see it on the surface. <laughs> All right, so I want to get some of her definition down on the page. So I'm just going to make some of my own graphite paper quickly here. <clears throat> I'm definitely having some seasonal allergies, all this beautiful rain and everything blooming. This is such a great way to take an image and make it your own, so I'm just using that Initial outline, I do like her crown, to sort of, you know, capture shapes. And I'll probably trace over that face, and I'm probably going to come back in with some black at some point, too. Just 
lift that up, make sure it's working. Yep, works great. Again, there's something about the, the, the graphic elements here. I love her earring. This looks like maybe it was a woodcut stencil. And I love this little mooka like almost like a zentangle pattern on here. And again, because this is inspired by someone else's image, right, this is not something that I'm making for resale. This is, you know, something that is strictly for personal use only. And I'm wondering, I'm just not going to get that birdie on there in this little one, but that's okay. So there we have the beginnings of a face. And I'm going to do that same thing with this rose and her arm. Sure, I get that placed right back where it was. And that rose again feels, you know, symbolic of blooming, spring, affirmations for personal growth. Julie and I were talking about an Anais Nin quote this weekend about. The rose bloomed, I'm not going to remember it all, Julie, but the rose bloomed when it uh, became too painful to stay tight in the bud. All right, so I've got a little bit of imagery on there. I like where it's going. And now I can come in and start to add some elements. I'm almost kind of liking maybe not having her body be finished here. I do think she needs a little bit of color added on. I want her to stand out a little bit more from the page. And I like where I'm going because by the time that we have, you know, the, the two sides of the journal here, right, they're going to match. And interestingly, these were clearly from two different sets of canvas boards because this one is just slightly thicker than the other one. So it also makes a good choice for the cover image here. All right, so I'm going to come in, I think with this big fat, no, that one's too fat, but I'm going to come in just with a Sharpie because that's what I've got here. And add some drama by just simply adding some black outlines. Also serve as painting guidelines, right, as I continue to add some color and paint here. Make sure we get our hairline in there. And sometimes just adding the outlines, I can just sit here and think about, becomes that mindful drawing of where am I going next with this? Like for me, I think I'm wanting to make sure this looks like a crown, which means maybe this pattern is actually going to go away or change. And I'm going to just put a little reminder of those little dangly bits. And I'm going to find a smaller black pen here. For some of these smaller details, this is great for those big bold outlines. But I'm 
going to lose the details if I don't come in here. Okay, so I missed part of her arm there. I'm just going to add that in. All right. Nope, that one's too fat too. So I'm definitely wanting to use something that is permanent. Somebody gave me that one. I don't know if it's permanent or not. And not something um, that is water soluble. I'm definitely wanting to use something that is permanent. I think she needs some fingernails too. I'm just going to thicken that line so they feel like they flow together a little bit better. rows in here as well. Roses are so fun to draw. They're just a simple combination of lines that just you put them together and see that shape of the rose. All right, she's coming together. I love she has this sort of gentle, compassionate look on her face. And now I can decide where to go next. She's got this sort of keep on. And I'm thinking that keep needs to be, we need her shoulder to be a little more even across there so we'll add a little more white paint on that side because you know a queen has to have her cloak all right interesting interesting I think I want some gold on that crown up there Let's see. It's my favorite gold paint because it's super opaque. The Nova Color Sun Gold is an awesome gold. And I'm going to paint right over this design. It's still going to show through. And it may take a couple of coats to get the opacity of the gold that I want. There's no uh, truly opaque gold acrylic paint. They all tend to be pretty transparent. This is the best one I found, but even with that one, it's... Isn't that gorgeous? Ooh, shiny. Shiny, shiny. You guys still hanging with me? What are you working on this morning? So it feels like a long, slow process, a lot of talking on my part. Maybe even our rose is gold. That might be interesting. Hmm. No, I think maybe it's going to be magenta with some gold over the top of it. But how's everyone else do this morning, doing this morning? I haven't even asked. All right, so this is one of those, now I get to have fun with adding the layers, seeing where I want to go next. We just finished a ballerina. Well, that sounds lovely. I'll watch for a picture online, Tori, if you're going to share it online. Okay, we need that rose to have a little more color. And then it might need to have a little bit more definition as well. So I might come in with that black and that gold again, but I really want to make sure it looks like that flower is standing out there. So that's probably going to be a little detailed Posca work. Cover up this here. Let 
Maybe we'll get her cloak flowing. I think we got like too many lines going on, so just cover those up. Not my normal color palette, so I'm also just mindful of the colors that I'm being drawn to here. There's no right or wrong. There's just kind of, this is what's showing up. I definitely, my palette tends to be inspired by, you know, what is growing and blooming around me. Although in the winter I have to manufacture that color. Again, not trying to be too precious with this. You know, it's going to all come back to together. I can add the stencils again. I can paint over things again. So again, this is just day one of creating an affirmations journal. I am painting the covers today. Tomorrow I'll make the interior pages, and then Wednesday I'll get to start actually working in the journal. But that cover is important because of the intentionality of this journal. It's all about affirmations for personal growth and self-discovery, so I wanted to make sure I paid some attention here. And I think those flowers are going to come back again over the top, but I wanted to get some base color going there. And I'm going to work on, I'm going to turn this upside down and get some color on her face and neck and her arm. I love mixing watercolor going, inspired to create a journal, mandala with Zentangle doodles, about to have your tea, lovely, awesome Tori, I will go look for it. All right, that one's just about empty. I keep a running list of my phone when I run out of favorite colors, like I love this raw sienna, so I can remember to replace them as I go. And for mixing paints, I want a nice dry brush. I don't want water added to these things. And I'm mixing some of that pink and white I've already used over here. Actually, that's probably closer to what I want so that I get those same colors all mixed in. Again, keeping things in the same family, that same color family makes the colors on the page all match. All right, I'm going to need a tiny brush for those fingers. I love, I can still see some of that rosy pattern underneath there. And again, I can just paint right over things, right? I can still see that black through there, which is the intention. And come back and ink them up again. I'll work on her eye a little bit. I'll bring the black back on her ear. Add a little extra pink on her cheek. It's hard to paint a face upside down, but it was easier to paint it so that I could see where, or not drag my hand through this wet pink paint down here. Julie, once you start making journals, it will become a new addiction. 
So sorry, not sorry, as my friend and Andrea says. When we were at Barnes and Noble yesterday, we were looking at all kinds of things, but I walked past a, a stack of journals and Brad's like, you don't need one of those. And he's so right, right? And I've gotten to where I really love making them. And of course I have a stash of ones that I made that haven't even worked in yet. All right, this definitely feels like just a first layer. It's got a way to go, but I love the way that's coming along. I'm loving all the symmetry of colors. Brighten up her face a little bit. And I definitely think I'm going to bring back that rose pattern and add it to her robe that she's wearing. Going to add some more gold up here and some gold to her earrings there. All right, going to have to work on those fingers a little bit. Again, this is where I will come back at the end with that because I love the way the bold black outlines look. It gives it that graphic element, and so I will come back at the end over the top and redo all that graphic black. But I like where it's going. Give her some hair. Hmm. And I'm seeing the black now, wondering if maybe some of that rose pattern is going to come back in black over the top. And again, as I paint, whether I'm painting large on canvas or painting on tiny canvases or in my art journal, I'm very mindful to the voices, right? That voice of the inner critic, but also the voice of curiosity and wonder. I wonder what would happen if is one of my favorite questions, because remember everything is paint over bowl. I wonder what would happen if. Okay, so I'm going to put a little bit of that black on there with that flower, just a little bit, see what happens. And then I'm probably going to let this dry and finish it up later. It's really close to being done. I think there's a little, let's mix a little bit of that black and pink together, soften that just a little bit. Interesting. That's so funny, you guys, about the, the card deck, because this morning as I was working, I was like, do I create an affirmation deck? Do I create a journal? I went back and forth, but I love creating card decks. Um, I have a few different versions that I've created, and... <coughs> One of the best ways to do it is to use an old deck of playing cards or an old deck of affirmation cards that you no longer are interested in, or I'm looking for her so I can cover this up, so that you can um, 
have that card shape plus the playing cards and affirmation cards are like really sturdy you can do it on all right i lost a piece of my queen here so that you can uh do it on huh. all right i don't know where she went so that you can have a nice sturdy surface to paint on you just have to make sure that you gesso them a couple of times first but it's super fun to create a card deck and that's so funny that i was thinking about that this morning that i almost almost chose that as the direction to go today All right, I think this is a little darker. This would be your first. Yeah, they're so fun to make. Yep, and the rose is a line for the Affirmations Journal, totally. An old deck of playing cards this weekend. Yep, awesome. Awesome. All right. Trying to do this without getting tons of paint on her arm, which is why I was looking for that. This is a tricky one to get lined up because it's not exactly the same everywhere. And I definitely like that color, sort of the black and the magenta mixed together there. All right, so I'm just not going to worry if it's all lined up. This is probably going to need some more white over the top, too, so I may even come in with a little layer of white, but I like the roses that are blooming here on her cape, and they're contrasting with the roses here, but the piece is now starting to get a little bit dark, so I'm definitely going to want to come back in with some white over the top. Either some white posca or maybe even some white flowers in the background. But definitely feeling that, that theme of blooming this morning and loving how it's coming together. So a little bit more right up there. And again, it's okay if I'm going over edges, everything can be fixed. What feels good is that it feels like it has a destination now, right? And it just um, takes a minute to figure all of that stuff out. And we're right at the top of the hour, and I'm like, I just want to keep painting and at least get the cover finished. So I am going to keep painting for a little while. If you have to get on with your day, totally get that. So this will be a little bit longer video. She's almost done, so I just don't want to quite walk away from her yet. She definitely needs some jewels in her crown, but I want to get a nice coat of that gold on there. And a nice dab of gold on her earring. And I'm wondering if I can just take a baby wipe. Thank you. She's coming together, Yvonne. Definitely not quite done yet, but super close. Oh, interesting. It's going all the way back to the matte medium. All right, we'll come in with some paint. Oh, I've got some nice texture showing up here on her arm from that stencil underneath. That's kind of cool. Almost like she has a, a tattoo under there. Okay, so I'm going to come back in and just bring the light back to her face, or the black back to her face, some of the details. And I'm probably going to come in with a, a Posca and 
fancy up her earrings there, out of maybe some little spots of turquoise. Just going to go back over those outlines so we get that nice strong black in there. Because I'm working with a very like not a lot of color in my palette. I really want the parts of the, the piece to stand out and so the black outline is going to help her stand out because we have a lot of the same pattern happening. We have a lot of the same colors happening, which is why I'm feeling that I'm going to need to come in and maybe do just some white line work. I'm thinking in this stencil here that maybe all it needs is um, some white outlines. I'm just being very careful here with the boldness of this, but I really want her fingers to, to stand out. And I think I might come in with that postcard and give her some fun fingernails there too. But now she's starting to stand out from the page and I can see her better. So let's come in. Sharpies do not like wet paint, so I figured that would be wet dry by now, but it's still just a little bit wet in there. So I'm just going very lightly over that rose so we can really get the sense that she's holding that gorgeous rose. Almost like she's smelling the rose. But it's also like she's kind of looking off into the distance. And it's funny because it looks like such a simple, simple page when it's all done. But look how long it took, how many layers it took for me to just get clear about what it was that I wanted to create in the direction that I was going. And she's going to need some white on her eye there too. Definitely some little pops of color still needed. But before I can add any pops of color to this, I need to let her get dry. So I will finish this one up later today and show the, the final version tomorrow. And then tomorrow what we're going to do is start to, and I think it needs some words on here, um, might be my affirmations journal, but what I'm feeling is I am in bloom might be a fun thing to put on here also. But I'm going to let her get good and dry. I'll show the, the finished version tomorrow on the video, and then I will also share how I'm going to make the inside of this book as well. I'm thinking I'm going to make a tab book because then I could even create the pages almost as if I were creating a card deck and actually put them together later. So I have some fun ideas about what that might look like. So I'm going to play with those ideas today. And I will see you guys all tomorrow. Thanks for sticking with me. This is Dr. Manette Riordan, Painting in Your PJs Live with Manette. Please click like on the video. And I will see you all tomorrow morning at 7 a.m. Mountain Time for a continuation of our affirmations journal. Have a beautiful, beautiful, and creative rest of your day. Thanks for joining me, everybody. Thank you, ladies. Thanks for joining.